Today we are going to be busting up ceramic tile. We're going to be laying a new floor in this bathroom. We uh, need to rip up all the trim that's currently there and the toilet's going to have to go. We're going to replace a new, uh, this toilet with a newer one. Uh, the ceramic tile in this room was laid very well. While that's good and the contractor did a great job, it makes our job as the demo team so much harder. Okay, as you can see, I've removed the toilet and I've removed the trim. Uh, I've also removed the, uh, the vent for the HVAC and uh, I've put towels over the holes of both the, uh, the vent and the toilet uh, hole that was there. And obviously you want to do that for the sewer gases that could be coming up while the floor is being demoed, but also to keep anything from going down there. Uh, this is all going to be broken into tiny pieces. I figured it was best instead of trying to break up each individual tile, I was just going to take a sledgehammer and start beating, uh, beating it up to pieces. Seems to work just as good. I know there's many different strategies for breaking up ceramic tile. This is just the one I've used and the one I'm going to stick with and do this time. I'd like to video the demo, but I'm afraid that because of the pounding that I'm going to be doing, it's going to get kind of shaky. Since I had the floor ripped up, I might as well go ahead and replace the uh, the quarter turn valve. This was original in the house, so right now it's probably it's working on 20 years old. So it's a good time to go ahead and replace it while I'm not damaging anything, and I've got the water turned off anyway. Got the uh, pipe cleaned up, got the new ring on here. I'm gonna slide that right over there. I wanna keep my turn valve on the left because the toilet will be here and be hard to reach if it was over here. But one thing you should uh, pay close attention to is to make sure this is in the per non perpendicular position. So right now uh, it is a 90, would keep that water when you turn it on from basically flowing out here and flooding your floor. You don't want to ask how I know that, but I think you can probably use your imagination. So I'm going to hand tighten this to a point. And it's gotten to that point. Now, you don't want to over tighten it here, but you can use your own judgment. Basically, when it really starts resisting, go ahead and stop. At that point, all it's going to do is just keep biting into your pipe and it's not really necessary. So, uh, I'm going to go downstairs and turn on the water and hopefully we don't have a mess when we get back. All right, we did it. We plumbed. Now, I'm going to turn this just barely, bleed it a little bit. All right, we got water. So the air is out of there. It'll make it a little easier for when we connect it. It won't blow so much through. But if I was to leave that running, water would start spraying at me. But the important thing is when I turn that off, it stays. We don't have any more drips. Okay, we're getting ready to lay the subfloor for, uh, for our uh, Dura ceramic product that we're going to be putting down. Um, <clears throat> there's, a, uh, there's a hole right here that you can see that I need to work around. And uh, for the stool, lots of different ways that you can measure for this. I'm going to measure off of the tub and then measure off just inside this wall right here and get my dimensions that I can then transcribe over to the piece and cut out the hole. So what I like to do is I like to measure off of the tub. I've got 19 inches on the one side and I've got 26 and a quarter on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and do 19 and 26 and a quarter. And then do the same thing here, just off the inside. Because I want that piece that I'm going to be putting down to be just inside this. So uh, when my tile goes on there, it has something to stand on. 
So the, the first measurement would be, uh, looks like about eight and three quarters and 16. Okay, we did it. We got it cut and it's perfect. It's gonna be laid down just nicely, fits right into those grooves. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, underlayment, uh, just uh, basically it's just, just some caulk, some sealant, and that should minimize some of the squeaks between the uh, two layers of wood. They're the same piece of wood, but uh, I'm gonna put this down. I'm also gonna screw it in place. I know most people would nail it. I'm gonna screw it just because I have extra screws and I feel like it's gonna be a tighter hold. So uh, here I go. All right, not too bad. Boy, that fit like a glove, didn't it? So we've won two battles today, plumbing and carpentry. So that slid right underneath there. Um, I've got uh, my Duraceramic tile. There's a 16th of an inch gap there. That's gonna be um, for my Duraceramic. I'm sorry, it's eight, eighth of an inch. So it's gonna slide underneath there perfect. And uh, now we just have to uh, get that section and then we're good. Okay, we have our last board pretty much ready to go in place. Again, I want to put down uh, some adhesive just to kind of get the squeaks out. And I'm not going to do this very cleanly. Just get it where it needs to go. All the way down. Again, I'm just trying to take out the squeaks. Probably more than I would need. I'm going to go ahead and use the whole thing. And set that off to the side. And with any luck, it's going to fit just perfect. And that looks great. I'm happy with that. I like to see um, how the first lay or first row is going to go. So uh, if you take a look at this, we've got our first row in place. I had to make a few cuts around that. I wanted to do that before I had the glue in place, knowing that you might have to uh, do a few measurements or a few uh, dry fittings before you actually get those in place. But what I did is I put a red line with a sharpie just down here. So when I put my adhesive, the adhesive goes down blue but it will dry clear. And when it dries clear, that way you know you can actually walk on it, start laying. Um, it's a pressure sensitive adhesive, so it, uh, it you know, will stick once something gets on it, but technically you can put your hand on it and pull up and there's no sticky residue left on your fingers. So that's nice. Um, I'm gonna remove these and go ahead and start laying the adhesive. All right. We are ready to lay the adhesive. The uh, manufacturer of the Duraceramic by Congolium uh, recommends that you use this. In fact, I think it voids any warranty unless you, if you don't. Um, it's great stuff to work with. I've put it down in my entire house pretty much so far. Um, you just kind of pour in an area and then you use this notch trowel. You can buy, I think it's a 30 second is the actual um, teeth joint on that. But the uh, manufacturer sends you this handy clip-on um, device that you can actually put onto your notch trowel. So uh, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to scoot it all around. I kind of like to leave these joints that are right up against the, uh, the baseboard trim. I like to leave those a little bit less um, with the glue because when I'm sliding in a piece, I want to make sure it goes in first when I can work it back. Because once you put one of these uh, tiles down on this stuff, it's pretty much there. Um, you're going to have to do a little demo to get it up and out of there. 
So uh, I'll give you a quick example of how this stuff goes on. I wear gloves because it is extremely, extremely sticky. You'll just work your way outside of a room. It's pretty easy. This stuff, like I said, goes on blue. But when it dries, it'll dry clear. And when it dries clear, then you know that you can start laying your tiles. Actually, this glue goes a long way. So, uh, if you're doing a small room, you could probably get by with the, uh, I believe it's a pint. Instead of, I believe this is the, uh, uh, this is one US gallon, so it would be a quart size. All right, good news. The entire floor has been uh, glued. And uh, essentially this is gonna set up, one of the really nice things about this glue is that you can do this 24 hours in advance. I mean, you don't have to do it right before you lay the tile. This is gonna take about a half an hour before it goes clear. Um, you can speed that up a little bit by uh, putting a fan on it, which is what I'm gonna do. Doesn't really uh, do anything, just make sure that the area that the fan is blowing from is loose from impediments because once anything starts uh, Stick into this, it's not gonna come up. So if you have any like wood chips or anything like that, uh, those things are gonna stick to it, make it a little bit harder and uh, less of a flat surface for you to lay your tiles on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my fan, come back in half an hour. Okay, we've got the uh, first row down. Um, the glue has sat. There's a few blue spots that you can still see, but that's nothing to really worry about. For the most part, it's gone clear, my red line uh, that I drew earlier is apparent. Now I want to stagger these and uh, the best way that I could figure out and uh, and do is I know that these are 24 inches um, 12 inches wide so what I did is I turned two right here on their sides just like that and then I know that with my grout line if I match these two up what I'm going to do is lay this one on the other side and line it up with these two ends. So I'm just going to slide that in just like that and make sure that it's right on those ends. It's good over here. And that's in place. It's going pretty quick. I mean, once you start laying them, they're not that, you know, they're 12 by 24 tiles and this isn't a very big bathroom, so um, they go pretty quick. So some people don't use the spacers, I definitely I do, but I don't necessarily use it for the grout lines to keep them consistent as much as when you start putting them down, it's helpful to lean them up against it because you don't get many chances to mess up. So right here, we're just putting that down. We've got them all separated. And that one's in place. All right, floor is done, as you can see. We've got everything in. It's time to start grouting. I've just got a, uh, a disposable float here. Um, don't invest a whole lot of money. It's not necessary. You're just gonna throw it away anyways. I think you can pick these up for like two bucks. So I wouldn't buy a really nice one with like a metal handle or anything. I'm just gonna throw mine away. Um, what I like to do is I'll put it down on the actual floor. You see the grout that's right there. And then I just kind of start working it in. And it's best if you come at an angle like that, you get more coverage. Get 
this. And I'm gonna come back after I'm done with the rest of the floor and do up against the sink. I actually might work that in at a different angle with like a knife or something and then wipe that up. But this just kind of gets worked in. And it doesn't take much because these are only an eighth of an inch thick tiles and you're really only putting about a sixteenth of an inch of grout. So this just kind of gets worked in like that. And then you'll need a bucket of water and a clean rag that will get very dirty. So you can plan on throwing that away or washing it out real good before you put it in your washing machine because this silicon will harden it. So I don't like to get too far so that way it's hard for me to reach. But you can see that I'm only spreading it along the grout lines, but it wouldn't really matter. It comes off, off of this tile really, really well. Okay. Now I'm going to take this. The first pass with it is going to be a little messy. That's okay. Clockwise motion. You can see it's kind of wetting the grout, which is what I want. Because then it smooths it so that way you don't have any rough marks inside the grout lines itself. So I'm going to wipe that off again. Start this over. Kind of see how it beads up a little bit on here. Don't worry about that. You can let that dry. That can actually be wiped up later. This surface on this has a film that won't allow anything to stick to it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up that back corner and then do the rest of the room. All right. So we're getting ready to mount our toilet. And if you've never done this before, it's very easy. We've got our two screws coming out of the cap here. Um, those are the originals that I have from the old toilet, but they're in perfect conditions and they're already in perfect spot. What I need to do is mount this wax ring to the uh, bottom side of this toilet, just like so. And I like to go ahead and put on a plastic uh, glove again. Um, just to, because this stuff is really sticky and it's just not easy to get off your fingers. That looks pretty good. It's right over that cap and it'll move a little bit. In fact, when I put it down on this, you'll feel a little uh, resistance, but that's good. You actually want the resistance. You want to be able to push this down and kind of feel this wax ring spread a little bit. That means it's creating the good seal. It's going to seal all the way around this and then this plastic part right here is going to go down into there. What that will do is it will lock any of the vapors that would be coming up through here, but it will also direct all water and uh, particles that are going to be coming up through here directly down there, not into this gap that's around the outside of the seal. So now that this is in place, it's pretty well stuck. I'm just going to lift this up and I'm going to use these guides through here and it's just going to sit right on top. It's a near perfect fit. It looks to be pretty square too. So 
that's where it's also helpful to have those screws in the right spot. You can adjust it a little bit if necessary. Where you'll see it not be square is with your tank. So when it's set up, you'll have your tank and you might see a gap more on one side than the other, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my nuts on there and the bolts and then the cap should fit right over the top of that and we're in good shape. Okay, one thing that I want you to pay particular close attention to is to put these in place, you've got this plastic washer right here, and then you got a metal washer, and then you've got this nut. Pay no attention to my princess band-aid. I've got two girls in the house, and that's pretty much all we have for band-aids. But there's actually this uh, plastic ring right here that uh, said this side up. That's the first thing you'll put down. Then you'll put your metal washer, and then you'll screw this on just like so. And you'll go ahead and you'll tighten it up with, uh, with a wrench. You don't want to over tighten it. This is China, so you don't want that to crack. And uh, so it'll hold it in place just fine. Most of it's uh, resistance just from its place on the floor. But what I really like is that it's pretty much level all the way around. I don't have any gaps. So nice flat floor really helps. All right, there we go. That's an installed toilet. No leaks. Everything looks good. Excellent news. The bathroom is done. Wasn't too hard of a job. I would imagine just about anybody could do it with a little bit of pre-planning and a few measurements, cuts, and everything here and there. Uh, this room came together really nicely, so I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And uh, I uh, will use this Congolium Dura Ceramic product again. It's super simple to work with. Cuts wonderful. For most of these cuts, I just used a, a straight razor blade. Uh, for some of the trickier ones that were around like the toilet or around some of the other uh, odd cuts that were in the room, a coping saw actually worked wonders. Slid right through this stuff like butter. But uh, the surface itself is very hard, it's durable, and I'm very happy to use it again. So uh, if you're looking for a ceramic tile alternate, this is a great product to use. Uh, wonderful for uh, the job that I had done. Hope you enjoy the time. Thanks.